But welcome to the 700 Club. One of the biggest concerns Americans have is out of control spending in Washington. So President Obama is proposing a little freeze on a small part of the federal budget. And Michael Steele, the Republican Party, said it's like a guy who goes on a diet after a pie-eating contest. <laughs> but, Pat, as we've seen with the health care debate, the president doesn't always get what he wants. Here's reporter John Jessup with that story. In the middle of a slow economic recovery, American families have learned to cut back spending. Now, President Obama wants the government to follow suit. He's asking Congress to tighten the purse strings on part of the federal budget, a proposal aimed to address public concern about government spending in the middle of a struggling economy and double-digit unemployment. Here's what he had to say in an interview with ABC's Diane Sawyer. So, you know, I understand why the American people, their attitude is not, it could have been worse. Their attitude is how do we make sure that we keep on getting it better. The three-year spending freeze would apply to domestic agencies and programs, including air traffic control, subsidies for farms, education, and national parks. It would not affect the budgets of the Pentagon, Veterans Affairs, or Homeland Security, nor would it apply to Medicare, Medicaid, or Social Security, the fastest-growing segments of the federal budget. In all, the savings would amount to $250 billion over the next 10 years, a drop in the bucket compared to the trillion-dollar deficits and a national debt of $12 trillion and counting. And the president certainly has his critics when it comes to the handling of the economy and spending. If you sum up the first year, what this administration has done best is rattle the markets, advocate tax increases, and run up deficits. The spending reductions aren't a sure thing. They require congressional approval, and it's unclear just how much support President Obama will get. While the proposal may win over some fiscal moderates, others fear it could cut valuable programs. But it will allow the White House to at least say it has made an effort to control spending. John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. Cosmetics. I think the American people are too smart to fall for something as cosmetic. You've got a huge budget, huge in the trillions of dollars, and now you're going to save maybe $20 billion in, you know, that's it. Well, I think as many Americans, it's, we'll believe it when we see it. Well, even if you see it, it's not going to be too much, but the, <laughs> all the interest groups are going to fight. The left wing is giving him trouble. The right wing is giving him trouble. And uh, I, I think that it's, it's like the Titanic. You know, you just rearrange the deck chairs, but it's not going to save the ship. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories in the CBN newsroom. Lee? Pat, hundreds of thousands of Haitians still need medical care after the deadly earthquake there two weeks ago. Not all of them are being treated in Haiti. George Thomas has this look at the medical treatment aboard the U.S. naval ship Comfort. The moment they arrived off the coast of Haiti, the doctors and nurses aboard the USNS Comfort have been working almost nonstop. It's uh, been a lot of stress. Um, because we know there's a lot of people that need our help and we're, we're working pretty much around the clock to do that. One, two, three. 80 doctors, 24 surgeons and 140 nurses working around the clock to help the Haitian people. Patients that we're getting are, are truly, truly injured and very sick. The injured are brought in by helicopter from the mainland and rushed to the ER on board. And I've worked in major trauma centers in the United States. I've had uh, folks, you know, we would be a busy day would be when we get 30 or 35 patients in a 24 hour period. Here we're getting over 100, 105, and they're all critically ill. We can check her again oh, now. Can get a CBN News crew has been aboard the Comfort since it left port in Baltimore, Maryland last week. The ship's captain has given our cameras and president access to film as the crew carries out their mission to save as many lives as possible. I can't tell you how proud I am to be serving with these people. And, um, you know, we're here for the people of Haiti. And, you know, we're here to represent the American people. And we would make sure that uh, the people back home don't forget that. Incidentally, this used to be a super tanker back in the 70s. And it was around 1987 that they decided to convert this into a, a floating hospital. It can, in essence, function as just your regular hospital except they can't do transplants. We have specialists, we have uh, nursing care, we have an ER operating room, ICU, we have everything a normal hospital would have. They also have three chaplains who minister to crew and patients alike. 
I'm limited in my Creole, but I know how to tell them that I'm a chaplain. I know how to tell them that God loves them and that we love them. For earthquake victims like Penal Joseph, being treated aboard the USNS Comfort has meant the difference between life and death. This ship has been a godsend to me and many of my people. So many lives are being saved and I'm grateful for that. But not everyone can be helped here. Many have died from their injuries. I think in a, in a disaster like this, uh, it's, it's inevitable. But I'd also like to say we just had a birth about an hour ago. So we've actually birthed uh, three babies right now. So with death comes life. The 1,000-bed vessel is expected to be full in the coming days as the Comfort prepares for an open-ended mission to care for Haiti's earthquake victims. George Thomas, CBN News, aboard the USNS Comfort off the coast of Haiti. Great service they're performing. A second Israeli medical team with the help of Operation Blessing has arrived in Haiti. CBN's Chris Mitchell was with the team as they left for the earthquake zone. These Israeli medical professionals gathered at Israel's Ben Gurion Airport for the 6,500 mile journey to Haiti. They'll bring their expertise to the people of Haiti on a life and death mission. Danny Mayor is their team leader. I hope as many people will, will be alive and not dead due to the fact that we're there. It's simple as that. It's impossible to sit in the comfort of your home and do nothing, watch all these disasters happening and just just remain in your seat. You actually have to do something. The medical team is organized by Israel Aid, an Israeli humanitarian organization. They're partnering with CBN's Operation Blessing. Operation Blessing actually complements uh, the stuff that we do um, with all the logistics and all the connections that Operation Blessing has in the field. Um, it's really important for us. Operation Blessing Israel Director Charmaine Heading says this cooperation is saving lives. Operation Blessing offers all the ground support and Israel Aid sends in the professional medical teams mostly to go in and we work together on the ground to save lives. This is the second team Operation Blessing and Israel Aid have sent to Haiti. The first team arrived on the ground 72 hours after the earthquake struck. It's been amazing. We've seen on one day in particular, they helped over 400 people. They've gone into a stadium, they've set up a field hospital. It's been really an incredible experience of working together very successfully on the ground. It's a really unique thing to be able to work together and save lives uh, together as a team. Both Operation Blessing and Israel Aid plan to send more volunteers to help the needy people of Haiti. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Ben Gurion Airport. And as you can tell, this is a multi-pronged approach to bring relief to the people of Haiti. Operation Blessing held a feeding program for 2,000 Haitian children Monday in the National Soccer Stadium. This is 10-year-old Jennifer. Her little sister was killed in the quake. She's living in a tent on the field of the stadium with her parents. Jennifer is one of more than 2,000 children that call the stadium home. As someone wrote on the wall in the background of this picture, the people are in desperate need of food, water, and medicine. Operation Blessing also set up a water purification system there. The joy on the children's faces sharply contrasts the devastation that has become everyday life in nearby neighborhoods. Thousands of other families, though, living outside the stadium still need help. Pat? Well, it's a joy to be able to help somebody. It's a tragedy, but we're doing everything we can to reach out to them and to give them clean water, to give them food, to give them medical. That's what they need most critically right now. It's a long-term uh, rebuilding, and as our government has said, Haiti, the government of Haiti needs to take the lead in, in, in rebuilding. But the, I think the international community wants to supply some money and to help. But we don't want to go back to Haiti like it was a couple of weeks ago because there were so many, you know, substandard pieces of property, housing, poverty, uh, uh, desperate trouble. We, we want to give a new start, and it, I think the Haitian people want a new start, and our Secretary of State has said, let's let them lead, and we want that to happen. But we want to switch now to some of the people who are helping CBN fulfill its mission around the world in Operation Blessing and in World Reach. And not long ago, there was a lady named Jamie Lagarette. She was a single mom with two kids. She had a few credit cards and a very small family. 
Today, Jamie's out of debt and making four times as much as she used to. Here's what made the difference. Jamie Lagarette is a successful stockbroker in San Francisco, working for a company that manages assets worth $100 million. But she can remember a time when she was facing a personal financial crisis. I just was laid off from a job, so I had no money, no job. I stayed with my mother for a little bit. Jamie got a new job, but it didn't pay enough to support her and her two teenage daughters. She could only afford a small condo in pricey San Francisco and used credit cards to pay for everything. Just for everyday living expenses, um, food, uh, gas, and clothing, and um, just overspent on the clothing part. Part of me knew that it was wrong, but I didn't know how to get out. Jamie racked up nearly $17,000 in credit card debt. She knew she needed help. She asked God to show her how to stop the growing financial disaster. She says God answered her prayer through a lesson on the 700 Club. I saw a portion that Pat taught on the law of reciprocity. I felt that I learned the tools through the 700 Club as to how to get out of debt, which is to tithe. Jamie began to give to her church and joined the 700 Club. She also canceled all of her credit cards. I just learned not to rely on the credit card. God took me through, and I learned at that point the finances belong to Him. Um, he just opened the way. My bills are always paid. There's always food. Um, I never have to worry about how I'm going to make it another day. Six months after joining the 700 Club, Jamie was offered a job as a sales assistant for a stockbroker, which paid 50% more than her last job. Then she decided to give even more. She joined the 1000 Club, giving $84 a month to CBN. A promotion at work followed with another hefty pay increase. Over the years, God has always prompted me, try, try to give just a little to stretch my faith even when I thought, I can't make it. Within a few years, Jamie was debt-free. Paying off her credit card debt provided a big relief. Once debt-free, Jamie was able to afford a beautiful new home, a reward Jamie attributes to her faithful giving. I looked at this house, and I just knew that the Holy Spirit said, this is the house. And I prayed. I said, God, that's the house I want. That's the house I want. Jamie is now a member of CBN's Chairman's Circle. She's also become partners with another stockbroker and is now making four times what she made in the beginning. And while the economy may look grim, Jamie believes that investing money with the Lord always has a great rate of return. And I know a perfect God can take care of somebody like me. Um, I know he can for you as well. You just have to step out a little in faith. What you give is what you're going to get back even more so than you ever imagined. A perfect a perfect God can take care of you. And the Bible says this, to those who use well what they're given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a DVD on the Secret Kingdom. And if you join the 700 Club, the 700 Club is $20 a month. And uh, that is 65 cents a day. And I want to send you this. The law of reciprocity, mm -hmm. you've used it in your own life, you know people who... Listen, Pat, I tell you, God is a God who is faithful even when things are difficult. You know, I went through a divorce a couple of years ago and literally my money was completely wiped out. It was during that time that I was so scared I wanted to hold on to everything I had. And literally I would walk by a person and the Lord would say, go give this person money. Go do this and go do that. And one particular time, I had very little, and the Lord said, give this woman $1,000. I said, Lord, I don't have it. He said, do it. I obeyed him. I did it. And it wasn't immediately, but as time went on, I realized that, you know, my son and I, we never needed for anything. Yeah. We were taken care of. Checks were coming in the mail. The law is real. It's a basic principle. And I think the thing about it, though, is it's fear, Pat, that keeps us holding on. Yeah. But when, when fear has us with our fists, fists clenched, mm -hmm. how can we possibly have our hands open to be able to receive what the Lord has. That's the basics of the law of recipro reciprocity. You give, and it really will be given unto you, but in order for you to give, you have to release and let go, right? I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, I want to give you some uh, good news. If I could have some fanfare. The great state of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. here is $30,000. Wow. From Florida.
Canada. Here is $100,000, and together it's a challenge for us now of $130,000. Now's a chance to put the law of reciprocity to work for you. Why would you suffer and struggle financially when God says if you give, it'll be given unto you? Press down, good measure, running over, will men heap into your bosom. Now, Mr. Director, 15 minutes, please, for this challenge, and we're going to have a wonderful day today. Father, yes. in Jesus' thank name, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Christy, what she did in obedience to you in faith. And Lord, we thank you for the ones in this that we've shown time and time again who've stepped out on faith and have been rewarded by the power of God. Bless now this challenge and those who made it. In Jesus' name, amen. Our telephones are available, folks. It's a toll-free number. It's 1-800-759-0700. Everything you pledge is going to be matched up to and including $130,000. So if you pledge $20 a month, that's $240. And these folks will give another $240. So that means that your, your $20 thing, gift or pledge becomes $480 when this challenge is on. So go to your phones quickly. Now, I want to introduce to you a guy who was really under it. I mean, Glenn Cox had more than $300,000 in debt. Sound familiar? Well, he said it resulted from one bad decision at a time. Don't we all know how that is? But it only took one good decision for Glenn to get out of debt and into his dream job. The saying is, uh, you work to live, not live to work. And I was living to work. Glenn Cox's life revolved around his career as a restaurant manager. But years of obsessing over work led to the day his wife, Michelle, packed up their kids and moved out. Glenn's career was all he had left. I think when Michelle left, that's when I had to really search for a deeper faith, to really grow up. I had to ask God for the first time to say, Lord, I've been wrong. Help me see the right way. Glenn started going back to church. I just took small steps. I tried to be a dad, got a job that didn't own me. I started becoming a giver, attending church regularly. Uh, and then just just prayed and had faith. Glenn also had to deal with a lot of debt. The total debt was somewhere in the $330,000 range. And it happened one bad decision at a time. While he slowly worked his way out of debt, Glenn decided to become a 700 Club partner. I just started doing the $20 a month. To me, it seemed like, man, shouldn't you do more? But I said, I got to do this and do it consistently no matter what's going on. Glenn got out of the restaurant business completely and moved to be closer to Michelle and the kids. I knew my motives were about getting my family right. So I had to get out of the job that had trapped me. But I had to give up that big salary to do that. It was not about the money. It was about that that job owned me. So I took a job making $8 an hour working for a guy that seal coated driveways. The next year, Glenn started a business of his own. And as it grew, he continued to be faithful in giving to CBN. It got into giving $40 a month and $80 a month. Every year it just doubled. And every year, God blessed me more. I mean, yeah, the law of reciprocity occurred. I mean, I didn't make it my motive to get something back. It just was a byproduct. From that point to now, it's amazing. I started with nothing. The first year, we had 350 customers. Today, we have over 20,000 customers. I can't say there's anything magical about the way I seal coat a driveway. I think it's God. The changes in Glenn's life also influenced Michelle. The couple reconciled, and Michelle became a Christian. I could see that in everything that Glenn did, he was genuine. It was really, truly from his heart. He was a different person. It was his faith that really was the catalyst that pushed me in the right direction. And the way we interact and the way we treat each other now is so different. It's based on respect, love, God, and our decisions and what we do and how we go forward. Today, Glenn and Michelle are members of CBN's Chairman's Circle. 
I get excited that now that we're able to give as much as we give to CBN and now how much I can give to my church and and I, I don't do it with any hope of getting something back and it just keeps coming. It's, it's just goofy. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is the law of jet propulsion. That's the law that sends rocket ships to the moon. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And Jesus said, give, that's your action, and it will be given to you. That's the reaction. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. But with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, that's what he promised. That is the Word of God. I didn't write the Bible. Boy, I wish I had, because it's a great book. But uh, uh, it's, it's a heavenly book. It's written over uh, hundreds of years by holy men of God who were moved upon by the Spirit of God. And that book uh, contains truths that are everlasting. And I found some of those truths that were put there by Jesus Christ himself. I hadn't seen them as I'd studied before, but I saw them. And out of that came a book called The Secret Kingdom with some of the laws of the kingdom. And this uh, DVD I will give you as you join the 700 Club as, as my gift to you. And I think it will bless you. If, 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 did you listen? Did you Absolutely, listen? I listened to it and I loved it. And one of the things you talk about, Pat, is being a servant. Jesus is the greatest servant. That's right. And that's part of it as well. When you serve others, then I tell you what, your world will be rocked. Well, it's what it says. Yeah. We do what God says, and Absolutely. He blesses us. Now, we have a $130,000 challenge. We've got only nine minutes left to go. We need calls. And every call, remember, every pledge you make, every time you join the 700 Club, and it's simple. You say, well, I can't do that. It's too much money. Look, look at what I got in my hand. Two quarters, a nickel, and a dime. You can't get a can of sugar-coated... Anything. Know, Colored Gun, soda. water. You can't get it for yeah. 65 cents. But for 65 cents a day times 30, that's $20. And you do that every day, and then for a whole year, that's $240. And these people will say, We will put $240 mm -hmm. right next to you right now. And these are people we know, and it's, it's, it's for real. So you will be blessed. CBN will be blessed. And we want you to call. So go to your phone. This is a day of blessing. Why would you miss the blessing that God wants to give you? He wants to give you an extraordinary blessing. So go to your phone right now and say, I want to stand in the way of blessing. They used to sing a gospel song. I want to stand, what is it? I can't help you out on I this I want to stand happy. under the spout where the joy comes out. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like a Baptist hymn to yeah, me. Yeah, well, that was a Pentecostal hymn. <laughs> I want to get under the, under the spout where the joy, where the <laughs> blessings come out. And God wants to pour out blessings on you. That's what he, his desire is. But you just have to take the first step. And you know what I think the biggest issue is, What's Pat, that? is just trust. Yeah. God does not need our money. The only thing he wants to know is, do you trust him? Do you trust that if you let go, that you will be able to receive and he can bless you even more? That's what it's all about. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a little bit of trust. And, yeah. uh, you know, <clears throat> will you trust me? Will you believe? Sure. He that comes to God must believe that he is mm -hmm. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. Go to your phones, call in right now, and let's say we trust God together and we believe that He is what He says He is. $130,000 and people are calling and the type total is coming up quickly and Wendy is here to bless us. All right, good words, Pat and Christy. Well, you know, it's so amazing to me how everything works backwards in the kingdom of God. For example, if you're in financial need, if you need money, the Bible says give it away. Well, that doesn't make any earthly sense, does it? But it makes perfect sense in the spirit realm because God says give and it shall be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it will be given to you. And you can even test him on that. God says it's the only thing you can test him on that. Well, that's known as the law of reciprocity that Pat just spoke about. And it's one of the laws that he talks about in his new teaching, The Secret Kingdom. And the principles in this teaching took one man from rock bottom all the way to the top. Take a look. Ready in the set? Going to Dr. Robertson in three, two... On December 3rd, 2009, 
Pat Robertson entered the studio to update his landmark work, The Secret Kingdom, to help people live abundant lives amid today's challenges. I want to talk to you today about The Secret Kingdom. What is The Secret Kingdom? The Secret Kingdom, Volume 1. I'm Gary Haven, founder and CEO of Curves. I first read uh, The Secret Kingdom. Uh, it appeared at a time where I had just hit rock bottom. The Secret Kingdom played a big part in Curve's success. It taught us those basic biblical principles that, if applied, allowed God to bless us. Today, we're the ninth largest of any franchise company. We do business in 80 countries. We're the largest fitness franchise in America, in Canada, in Japan, Brazil. It's been an amazing story. Had I not learned the principles in The Secret Kingdom, uh, Diane and I would probably be in Harlingen, Texas, running two curves, helping hundreds of women, but millions of women might still be suffering. This year, that company, along with all the franchisees, uh, is a $2 billion a year company. And uh, that's a miracle. Gary Haven found out the secret, and you can too. It's all in Pat's new teaching, The Secret Kingdom. We will give this to you when you call right now. Please join us. And if you're already a 700 Club member, hey, why not take it to the next level? It's 700 Club Gold. It's just $40 a month. Or a thousand club member at eighty-four dollars a month, twenty-five hundred club level, two hundred and nine founders club at four hundred and seventeen, or chairman circle at ten thousand dollars a year. And hey, whatever blessing that you bless us, it I trust me, God will bless you back a hundredfold, Pat. It'll happen, and here's somebody calling from New York. New York. New York. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Big Apple. Frank Sinatra, sing it for us. Uh, Ten thousand and eight dollars. A member of our chairman's circle against the challenge of hundred and thirty thousand dollars. It is a great day today, and people are saying, "How do I get out of debt?" Well, when Estrella's husband died six years ago, she wondered how she could raise her children on a hairdresser's salary. Well, you wanted the same thing, but Estrella soon tripled her business by taking advice from a friend. As a widow, Stella had her hands full raising two kids and working as a hairdresser. She began noticing that one of the other hairdressers, a Christian, tucked 10% of each day's earnings away in her Bible. Stella asked her why. She says, I'm giving back to God. She'd tell me all the time, he's been too good to me, baby. And I'd say, really? You know, I, and I kept thinking, imagine that, giving your money away. Her friend shared a promise from the Bible with Stella. Test me and try me and see that I will open the windows of heaven for you. And I thought, well, that would be so neat for God to open the windows of heaven for us. Stella hadn't been taught to tithe, but she decided to give it a try. I got to where I counted my haircuts daily and my perms and my colors and at the end of the week did my total and then I would tithe 10% from that. Before long, Stella saw her clientele triple. I think the more I gave, the more business I got. The more business I got, the more I gave. It just kept like a snowball effect and um, it became fun. One of Stella's clients introduced her to her son, Larry. The two married in 2005. Stella's dedication to tithing was foreign to her new husband. You're working for a living, you're thinking, man, I need all this money. I worked hard for that money and that's my money. Larry became a Christian after he married Stella and followed her example of tithing. He immediately got a $1,000 raise in his paycheck. Larry and Stella decided to give more and join the 700 Club. Just watching the little children get their lips their cleft lips fixed and uh, watching the water wells be built and we decided that that was where we wanted to send our money to. Since the Hoopers began to give, Larry has received two big bonuses and a company car. They were even able to build their dream home. I would like to encourage the viewers not to be afraid. That if you have that little still voice in you telling you to give, you know that's God. The devil's not going to tell you to give the 700 Club. In fact, he's going to tell you not to, and he's going to put doubt in you. I would challenge them to listen to that, because the word says, test me and try me, and see that I will open the windows of heaven for you.
I love it when people yeah. read the Bible, lay hold of the truths, then practice them. Come on. And then God says, you're the people I'm looking for. And the eyes of the Lord, the Bible says, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to and fro like a heavenly radar to show himself strong in behalf of the man whose heart is perfect toward him. So when he finds an Estrella and Larry, he says, okay, my blessing is yours. Well, if you only obey me and let me help you, then you will have plenty. That's what God says. If you only obey me and let me help you, you will have plenty. Now, here is plenty more. Amen. <laughs> this is from... Where is it from? California. California. Yeah. This is a whole big challenge from that great state, California. $120,000 on our challenge. And that takes it up now to $250,000. Another 15 minutes, Mr. Director. We're going to see victory. Mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name, let there be victory in your name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless and multiply. Amen. Amen. 250,000, wherever you are. Well, you want to tell me something? I do. You know, uh, uh, we just watched that story. I have yeah. a girlfriend of mine. I don't think she'll mind telling okay. me, this, uh, me telling this story. Entrepreneur for years, very successful for years. The past couple years, nothing. Nothing was coming in. Nothing was working. And she kept saying, the economy, Christy, the economy. And I started to ask her. She's been a Christian for years. I said, you know, do you, do you tithe faithfully? Do you, do you give yeah. to the Lord? And she goes, well, you know, I, I give money here and I give money there. And I said, but consistently, mm -hmm. do you? And she's like, well, when I think about it, no, not really. Yeah. So she started to tithe. If she got a dollar, literally 10, you know, 10 mm -hmm. cents, no matter okay. what she got, she started to give. And then she started to pray for different organizations that she could uh, sow into. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, she calls me one day, she goes, Christy, you are never going to believe this. Yeah. She's like the month of actually this is last year the month of March she goes I made more money the next following month than I have made in the past five years come on and she's like this is true this and she's like you know all my life I've been scared all my life I made money and I always wanted to hold on to it she's like it never even dawned on me and I said because you don't understand God does not need your money he doesn't need your faithfulness yes. he needs he needs you to trust him he needs you to obey him so that he can rock your world I know rock your world is not in the Bible Pat but he is <laughs> he will okay but one month she had more than she did in the previous one month. One month. Well, I mean, she tithed for a while. Don't get me wrong, but one particular month more than than, than she than had like in five years. And she's like, this is grief. bizarre. Two hundred and fifty thousand, ladies and gentlemen, move into the blessing yes. that God has for you. Give, he said, and it will be given unto you. Press down, good measure, running over, will men heap into your bosom. Yeah. We've got toll-free lines here, 1-800-759-0700. The challenge is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. When it's matched, it'll be a half a million dollars. Well, the golf course is a great place to unwind after work, at least if you play well. It's not necessarily a good place for me to unwind. I, it drives me crazy. But anyhow, it's, okay, Pat. it's a nice place to spend hours with friends. For Anthony Griffin, it's also the place where he developed a million-dollar idea. Watch this. Anthony Griffin trains soldiers on how to operate military vehicles. But when he's not at work, He's on the golf course. He's passionate about golf and loves teaching kids. He even started a ministry that compares the game of golf with living a Christian life. In golf, you have golf etiquette. So in ministry, we have etiquette too, which is the kingdom of God. We have the principles and the laws of God. Including the principle of tithing. If I give, I'll receive. But you just don't give to receive. You give because you really love God, and God commanded you to give because of blessings pronounced on your life through giving. And for Anthony, giving includes giving to CBN. They are teaching the principles and precepts of God of giving and sowing and reaping into nations and people outside of other countries. And Anthony is seeing blessings in a huge way. God gave him the idea for a unique mm -hmm. golf shoe design. One day while I was playing golf, I was hitting the ball and a tee flipped up and went into my shoe. Because the tees, when you hit it from the driver, when you hit it, they'll flip. And this one flipped up and it caught into my shoe. And I was like, where, where did my tee go? And the Lord was giving me a vision. He said, keep it in your shoe. I said, keep it in my shoe. Anthony designed a shoe that holds the golfer's tee, divot tool, and ball marker right on the shoe. In golf, you have to bend down to do everything. To put your tee in the ground, your shoe's already there. You have to book the ball marker, it's already on your shoe. You gotta bend down anyway. 
Three orders came flooding in. His first order from the manufacturer is 200,000 pairs of shoes, with 500,000 to follow. Anthony is expected to make millions. He's grateful God gave him such an innovative idea, and he feels the Lord blessed him because of his faithfulness to give. Just give, just trust God, and watch God work. Trust God and watch Him work. The Bible says in the Psalms, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. You know, people love to criticize somebody who just said what I just finished saying. Listen, I want to make it perfectly clear. I didn't write the Bible. I didn't write the Psalms. I wish I had, but I didn't. I didn't write the parables of Jesus. I didn't write the Ten Commandments. I didn't write any of it. But I sure can follow it and obey it and be blessed by it. And I think the Word of God stands, you know, true. Mm -hmm. And though... Uh, Heaven and earth, Jesus said, will pass away, but my word will not pass away. And it's there. And it's there as the word of God Almighty, your creator. As somebody said, he wrote the, the manual about how you're supposed to live. Quickly, go to your telephones. Call in yes. and take advantage of the blessing that God has for you. Yeah. We have a $250,000 challenge. And I want people to put it to work, Pat. It's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month. Think about it. You've mentioned it before. What's 65 cents? You can't buy anything for 65 cents. Not gum. <laughs> <laughs> you can't buy soda. You can... Listen, $20 a month. I was looking at my bills the other day. Yeah. I don't have anything under $20 a month. So when I wrote on my pledge, I was like, thank you, Jesus. I can handle that. That's your yeah. <laughs> Even though it's more. But pretty Praise yeah, God for it. it. 65 cents a day. We're asking you to call to become a 700 Club partner. Well, here's some people who are yes. calling Germantown, Tennessee, not too far from Memphis. $5,000. $5,004 from Lima, Ohio. Yeah. Here is $5,004. All of the challenge, a $250,000 challenge. And Wendy has happiness for us. All right. Good preaching over there, Pat. And, you know, I just want to say the, the law of gravity, you can't see it, but it's very real. Well, just like the law of gravity, there is an unseen spiritual world that's also very real. And if you understand how it works, it will unlock God's greatest blessings in your life. Well, you need to understand how God's kingdom works. That's why Pat's put together his new teaching called The Secret Kingdom. And here's Pat to tell us more. You and I live in a visible world, yet there is at work all around us an invisible kingdom of unlimited goodness and power. In the Bible, Jesus Christ has given us fundamental kingdom principles that are as valid in our world today as the law of gravity. These principles can overcome every obstacle or circumstance we encounter and guarantee our success. Taken from his national bestseller, The Secret Kingdom, this latest DVD by Pat Robertson reveals how God's kingdom works, principles that produce exceptional growth and development, unchanging keys that build success in business, finances, health, relationships, and much more. You can reach from a world of impossibilities into a realm of limitless possibility and power. The Secret Kingdom by Pat Robertson. Available now. The Secret Kingdom is our free gift to you when you join the 700 Club. 1-800-759-0700 is the number to call or you can log on to CBN.com. Please go to the phones right now. We really need your help. And when you do call, please ask the counselors that you talk to for Pledge Express. They all want to sign up for Pledge Express because with your permission, your bank does all the work for you. It's no stamps, no checks, no hassle. It's absolutely so convenient. And when you do that because you save us money, we want to send you another gift called Power for Life. You will get monthly teaching DVDs that will so revolutionize your spiritual walk. So if you call right now and ask for Pledge Express, you'll get the Secret Kingdom and Power for Life. Pat? Actually, you're throwing it to me, Wendy. It is all good. Listen, and when you do call to become a 700 Club partner, I want to show you what you do. In Haiti, more than 2,000 people are crowding in the stadium in Port-au-Prince looking for food shelter and medical help. Here's how Operation Blessing is actually teaming up with doctors from Israel to provide all three. Right, we've just left the airport. We're driving through the streets of Port-au-Prince. Houses are down either side and there's lots of people on the move carrying their belongings, looking for food where they can find it. We've got a team of doctors behind us. We've got a truck full of medicine and food in front of us. 
Uh, we're trying to keep moving because when we start, people surround the, the, the vehicles and they think they might be able to get hold of something. So it's, you know, it's quite tense. We've come up to a few roadblocks and that kind of thing. Uh, and we're, we're really looking forward to getting to the stadium as quickly as possible. Did you expect to find anything like this when you were coming in? No, not really. I mean, I'm actually shocked that uh, five days after the, uh, the earthquake, we're still seeing these kind of injuries here that had not really been uh, dealt with properly. I, mean, I, I have to assume that if these people just left their wounds untreated, uh, like they were now, that we'd have amputations and, and probably death uh, setting in. So I think it's amazing and it's, it's great that we're here and working together. This girl here, her name is Jasmine. She's from Jeremy. She's a student here in Port-au-Prince. Her parents still live here. They are probably back in Jeremy wondering how she is, uh, if she's even alive. They don't know they anything about it. Without Operation Blessing, we couldn't have done any of this because you've uh, provided us with the, the medicines that we're using over here, with the food that we supplied uh, to the people here in this in the stadium, a uh, place to uh, to sleep and, and water and uh, really the essentials in order to allow this team uh, the good work that it's doing. So I think without without this cooperation, there was no way that we could have done this kind of work. Just a few minutes ago, we had a woman brought to us that was just pulled out of the rubble. And we, we were all in shock. We didn't think that people could still be alive at this point, especially because it's been so hot. You don't have access to, to water. And, and we were shocked because this woman seemed like she was dead. She looked dead. She smelt like death. She must have been close to other people that were dead. But she was alive. She was breathing, but it was only it was very slight. So the, uh, the paramedics uh, injected her with, with intravenous drips, and they whisked her off to the Israeli medical hospital. Uh, and we've seen cases of, of tra traumatic uh, limb breakages, lots of head wounds today. And I've just been very, very impressed with our doctors, our Israeli doctors. They've been working extremely hard all day under the hot sun, saving lives here in Haiti. If you don't give, who will? We all need to step up to the plate because it takes all of us to do a little, but we can, when we're all together, we'll do so much. So I'm asking you, we're asking you to become a 700 Club partner right now. It's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and not only will you help the people in Haiti, give them food and antibiotics and clothing and love, but you'll also help reach people all around the world. You see, we've been in Haiti even before the earthquake happened, and we're going to be there long after um, all the other places are probably leave. We're still going to be there, but we need you now. So go to the phones. Go to the phones. We only have four minutes left on this challenge. I think, uh, how much do we have on this challenge? Thank 200, you. 250000 $250, right. challenge, Pat. And, uh, Help me out. Christy, I, I have yeah. in my hand here four coins. I, I, it's, it's so simple. Yeah. It's, 65, it's pocket change. 65 cents a day. But if you take it every day for 30 days, that's $20. And if you take it for a year, it's $240. And when you do that, these people who are making this challenge uh, will add to it $240. So your 65 cents becomes $480. Yes. That's the miracle of this challenge is before us. Now, folks, we've got three minutes and 21 seconds. It's coming in. It's a $250,000 challenge. Every phone needs to ring. It's an exciting day. <laughs> well, think of little children. I've got four children, got 14 grandchildren, and you think how precious they are, and yet you see children dying, and the number one cause of death for children today is pneumonia. So when a little girl in Honduras got the disease, her parents says, well, she's gone, it's a death sentence. Dilcia is a sweet little girl who lives high in the mountains of Honduras with her mom and dad. Her dad, Julio, grows corn on his small farm, but it doesn't bring in enough money to pay for everything they need, like the strong antibiotics to treat their daughter's bronchitis. She couldn't breathe well because of the cough. She would choke. Dilcia's parents walked three hours to the closest health center to have their daughter checked, but they only had enough money for cough medicine, not enough for the antibiotics to fight the infection. Days later, Dilcia's cough turned into a deadly form of pneumonia. We would get sad because we didn't have a way to buy an antibiotic that was powerful enough to fight the pneumonia. We wondered if our little girl would die. But that same week, Operation Blessing came to their town to set up a free medical clinic. 
For Dilcia, the help came just in time. I told the doctor about our daughter's breathing problem. He examined her and gave her a powerful antibiotic. Today our daughter is no longer getting sick, and we see that she's happier and has more energy when she's playing. And to make sure the family has enough money to care for their daughter in the future, Operation Blessing bought them some chickens to start a small business selling eggs. I'm grateful for Operation Blessing because it saved my daughter's life. Thank you, Operation Blessing. Honduras, that's one more place where we're operating. We're working. We're working in India. We're working in China. We're working in Cambodia and Thailand and, and uh, all over Africa and uh, other countries in uh, South and Central America. And uh, Haiti is, of course, in the Caribbean, and we're working there. But, um, whew, Christy, if I could have a little fanfare. I have something good yes. from Michigan. Michigan. Michigan, one hundred thousand dollars on our challenge from the Michiganders. Three hundred and fifty thousand now on our challenge. Make this the rest of the hour, Mr. Director. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And before we get on to something else, we've got from Maxton, North Carolina. Here is uh, $5,000. Yep. A member of our founders. Wonderful. And from Garfield Heights, Ohio, here is a founder that says, I want to increase. I've been giving 5000 I want to give 5008 $5, more. He's joining the chairman's circle, $10,008. Fantastic. You know what's so exciting, Pat? You're talking about all the different places that we've helped all yeah. around the world. But listen, we also help our next-door neighbors, too, right here in the good USA. Well, last summer, severe floods left hundreds of people homeless in Atlanta. One of them was a grandmother who had no money to rebuild her house until a team of volunteers showed up to give her an extreme blessing. Danny Hongerbrook lives in suburban Atlanta with her daughter and granddaughter. She's retired and enjoys her time at home. But that was interrupted by five straight days of heavy rain. Floodwaters ravaged the Atlanta area, leaving many stranded and without a home. Well, Fanny and her family live here in Five Oaks, a subdivision where residents were not allowed to obtain flood insurance. Yeah, we are flooded. What are we going to do next? We have nothing to rebuild with, so we really don't know what to do. And then here come Operation Blessing, I think the second day. I'd go to them and ask them, well, what am I supposed to do next? And they'd say, okay, Miss Fanny, we're going to get to you. You'll be all right. And so it just gave me such a relief kind of feeling after that. I just didn't worry about a thing. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Operation Blessing rushed in to help. They asked Miss Fanny and her family to stay elsewhere just for a few days, with only the promise of a little sheetrock being hung. Well, Operation Blessing then partnered with volunteers and worked day and night to restore Miss Fanny's home in only four days. They not only hung sheetrock, but also put in new carpet, new paint, and even brand new furniture. Finally, after many days of hard work, the family returned home for a surprise they'll never forget. I just thank God because they say after every storm, there's a blessing. You have to wait and see what it is. And I really appreciate it. And I just didn't want no time to pass without thanking them. I had prayed and I, I felt that everything was going to be all right. And I was crying so hard. I felt so loved. Thank you. Operation Blessing is a blessing because of you. When you give and become a 700 Club partner, you really do change 
people's lives. Listen, I want to encourage you, if you're not a partner, to become a partner right now. It's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month. When you do, we want to make it easy for you. That's why we put together something called Pledge Express. Literally, the bank does all the work. Um, it's an electronic monthly giving system where you don't have to worry about stamps or anything. And what's so phenomenal is that when you do become a 700 Club partner and you say, I want to sign up for Pledge Express, we give you this teaching series by Pat and Gordon called Power for Life because you talk about the law of use in terms of reciprocity. Use what you got, and one of the things you have is the gift of teaching. And so yeah. it's your teaching <laughs> that we have on this. Did you um, like that transition, Pat? I, it's beautiful. <laughs> I, I enjoy teaching the word because there's such truth in there, and it yeah. just comes alive. I, I love it. Well, folks, we have before us a, a third of a million dollars, 350000 Wow. That's our challenge. Yes. And we have seven minutes and 43 seconds to match it. And we want people to call. Mm -hmm. And the telephones are available. It's a toll free line. And we also and have CBN.com, too. CBN.com. Yes, you can log on the internet, <laughs> whatever is convenient for you. Well, an old saying claims that opposites attract. And Earl and Kathy were opposites, especially when it came to money. She was a saver, and like a lot of men, he was a spender. Earl and Kathy Ostertag fell in love from the start. But going into their marriage, they had two different views on how to handle money. I've always been a, a saver. I've always been a tither, but I've always believed in living within my means. Earl was $25,000 in debt. I felt like there was a weight on my shoulders. The couple faced a tough decision. Should they wipe out Kathy's life savings to pay off Earl's debt? I had worked very hard for that. Just about the last thing that I wanted to do was to pay off that large debt. It was the only thing that we could do. And then we would have to look to God again to see how he was going to work it out. They prayed about it and agreed to pay off the debt with Kathy's savings. This was really a step of faith for us. I was really humbled by that decision. Uh, I knew she loved me. What a weight off my shoulder. During that time, Kathy, who sells commercial real estate, talked to Earl about the importance of giving a portion of his salary to God. Earl decided to tithe on the money he made as an iron worker, and he started giving to CBN, just like Kathy. I just really recognized that God's favor was truly on her. Kathy had already had a history with CBN. Why change a good thing? Within one year, the Ostertag's money problems vanished. Through a commercial real estate business venture, Kathy earned $30,000. That's $5,000 more than the cost of their debt. I remember getting that check, and I just, I laughed, I cried. I'd have never seen anything like that happen to me in my whole life. It was just so utterly exciting to just, to see God just bring that back in a year. He's faithful, and he's good. He looks out for the needs of his kids. On top of that, Kathy got a 25% raise at work. Today, the CBN partners continue to make giving to God a top priority. By doing that, you have no idea what God's going to do for you and how he's going to bless you and increase you. And it comes through the most extraordinary ways, just incredible ways. You just never know how God's going to do it. I laughed, I cried, I shouted for joy because God had done something. God will bless you, and when the blessing comes, you will want to dance for joy because his power is there, and you say, yes, yes, I believed, and he fulfilled what he promised. There's nothing more wonderful than having God meet his promises, and you see it tangibly before you, and you say, yes, God, you exist, and you reward those who diligently seek mm -hmm. you. From St. Louis, Missouri, yes. coming in on the internet, ten thousand and eight dollars. From Duluth, Georgia, a new founders member, five thousand four hundred dollars. It's on a $350,000 challenge. Good things are happening. Absolutely, Pat. You know what's so great about that story mm -hmm. is they learned it wasn't about him being right or her being right. It was about the right way, God's way. And hey, if we just do it God's way, we'll be good. Is that grammatically correct? That's it works. perfectly <laughs> wonderful. We'll be, yeah, good. It Good's will be good. fine. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got three minutes and 54 seconds. We count whatever's on the telephones. Everything that comes in right now, I guess, the challenge of $350,000. Don't stop calling. Yes. Make these phones ring. Wendy, quickly. 
When you join the 700 Club, you will be blessed to be a blessing, and we want to give you the Secret Kingdom as our free gift to you. Take a look. If you will not forgive your brother, then you will cut yourself off from the state of being forgiven and the state of seeing the kingdom of God. If you want to look up into the kingdom of God, you'll see what's there, but you must forgive. You must accept God's forgiveness in your life, and you must walk in forgiveness. The Secret Kingdom, it's our gift to you when you call right now. Please go to your phones right now or log on to CBN.com. Christy? Thanks, Wendy. Well, when Samuel's grandfather dropped him off at an orphanage, he thought he was giving his grandson actually a better life. But he didn't know that the orphanage was struggling just to feed the children who already lived there. Samuel was only two when his parents abandoned him and he went to live with his grandpa. The man cared for the boy as long as he could until there wasn't enough food left for two. That's when he came to live here, at this home for children in Thailand. This is Pastor Thirasorn. I felt very sorry for him. He was very thin. My heart was moved with compassion for him. So we took him in. But Pastor Thirasorn faced a challenge of his own. He had a growing number of children coming to live there, and this was the only place he had for his staff to prepare meals for 16 people. When CBN's Orphans Promise learned about the children's needs, we provided them with money to build a new kitchen and a dining room, which allows all the children to sit and eat together. And Samuel is no longer too thin. He now gets three meals a day and a warm bed to sleep in, all thanks to CBN Partners. Thank you, CB, and thank you. I don't know what it is about babies. I just want to take my pocketbook and empty it out and just give them everything. <laughs> yeah. Listen, become a 700 Club partner. 65 cents a day, $20 a month. You have something in your hand, Pat. I do. Yeah. From Downingtown, Pennsylvania, a founder is increasing to $570 a month, $6,204. And you'll notice that little flip on the screen, that 27, that's how much left to go. Fergus Falls, Minnesota, a new member of our chairman's circle, $10,008. Only 17,000 to go. We'll count everything on the telephone. We're going for victory. Yes. Call now. The yes. phones are available. Look at it go, is go. exciting. It's just 15,000 left to go on a $350,000 mm -hmm. challenge. We count everything on the oh, telephone. Come on, and here, here comes something else. Look at that from San Carlos, California. California. $10,000. Oh, that's 2,000 left to go in 29, 28 seconds. Oh, my goodness. There Look it is. Go there now. it here is. Here we go. We're so close. Well, $1,000 one, one one more. more. Quick, 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 quick. We're going to get it. I know we're going to get it. Somewhere. Somebody. We have it. I, oh, I take it by faith. I know it's there. 13 seconds, Absolutely. 11 seconds. Where are you? They're on the phone right now, Pat. I know it. Well, tell them not. There, there it is. There we go. We oh, got there's it. another one coming. All right. Here's another founders oh, member. Oh, when? Here this you go. is from uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. $7,200. Yes. Mr. Director, let me see what the reveal is on our challenge. 350000 that we received against it. 359. Praise God. Well, we leave you with these words from Matthew. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. While Mary feeds her two young daughters, she also helps feed needy families around the world. While Bob hands a drink out to a co-worker, he helps give water to villages with new wells. And while Carl builds a house for his son's new puppy, he helps rebuild homes in disaster areas. 
These people all have something in common. They're CBN partners who have joined Pledge Express. I hope you'll consider joining Pledge Express too. It's a way to simplify your own life while speeding help to others, all at the same time. There are no checks to remember or stamps to buy, and your gift goes to work faster, helping those who need it most. So join us and change the world for someone today. Ready in the set? Going to Dr. Robertson in three, two... On December 3rd, 2009, Pat Robertson entered the studio to update his landmark work, The Secret Kingdom, to help people live abundant lives amid today's challenges. I want to talk to you today about The Secret Kingdom. What is The Secret Kingdom? The Secret Kingdom, Volume 1, available now.